Hello. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. And I'm um, just going to talk a uh, small talk on the, uh, this clinical test that we uh, now do uh, for our patients. <clears throat> Uh, we do know the radiographs of hip dysplasia can be quite subtle, and therefore the physical exam may play an important role in the diagnosis. And there are certainly treatment implications when diagnosing mild or, um, as Brian Kelly now calls it, occult dysplasia, which is difficult to see in the definition. So range of motion may be increased with femoral antiversion, acetabular antiversion, or DDH, and provocative hip uh, exam tests commonly performed are the impingement test and the apprehension test. The impingement test, though, may be positive in both FAI and DDH. So we de describe a new provocative test uh, that we found to be helpful when considering the diagnosis of hip dysplasia or instability, and it's called the prone apprehension relocation test, or PART test. Here's an example of the test on a subject where you get them to relax the leg, you extend the hip and cradle it with them relaxed, and then push on the upper posterior thigh and they complain of pain in the anterior hip that goes away when you let go. And it's very consistent. You ask them if it hurts in the front, they say yes, you let go, and it feels better. So we wanted to validate the test by associating a positive versus negative result to radiographic parameters of hip dysplasia and clinical exam findings. And our hypothesis that a positive part test would be associated with radiographic evidence of hip dysplasia and focal anterior under coverage. This was a retrospective review of all our patients in our hip preservation registry who presented over a six-month period of time and included were all patients uh, evaluated for dysplasia or instability and had a documented part test on their initial workup. We divided the groups into those with a positive part and a negative part test, and we wanted to see if there's an association with range of motion, specifically flexion, internal and external rotation and 90 degrees of flexion, and is there association with radiographic measurements of the hip, lateral C angle, acetabular depth, and acetabular version on CT scan. We had 90 patients, 159 hips, the majority female. We had a positive part test in 21.4% and a negative in 78.6%. And this is the results of our summary showing it was consistent with acetabular version having a uh, p-value of 0 0.045. So there was no significant difference in hip range of motion between the positive and negative part patients and no association between a positive part and a positive anterior apprehension test. There are no significant differences between a negative and positive part with regards to lateral C angle, acetabular depth, and femoral version, but we did find a correlation with uh, acetabular version at 3 o'clock being increased, which is maybe another sign of just acetabular deficiency in the anterior part of the acetabulum. Historical methods of diagnosing hip dysplasia may not adequately diagnose all patients just on x-rays alone. The part exam is a valuable supplement to replicate hip instability symptoms in patients with anterior acetabular on coverage, and it can be particularly helpful in a revision in complex cases where the optimal treatment is debated. Now at our center, both the open and arthroscopic surgeons are utilizing it as part of our hip exam in complex cases, and we're studying prospective cohort with two independent examiners. And the striking thing is there's a really good agreement between the examiners on early prospective cohort. Thank you.